Hello everyone, my name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. As you notice, I'm not in my regular location because this week I'm in a business trip, but I didn't want to leave you without another episode of the Swift testing series and here I am with you providing the next one. In today's episode, I want to focus on a continuation of the parallel testing. Last time, we saw that there's basically no effort, no setup to run tests in parallel. And you can easily uh, centralize your, your test data and then make your test really small in a way of focusing on the things that matters, all right? But we saw that there are particular things or situations where you cannot use the power of the parallelization yet. For example, if you are in a project, a legacy project, you maybe have set up your test in a way of running after another, in a serial way. Should we then migrate everything and wait for Swift testing later? The answer is no. You can actually support that and do that mi migration uh, gradually in a way of including Swift testing, but not modifying the behavior of your test. Let's see that with this example. So here we are with this uh, parallel testing demo. This app is just for demo purposes, okay? So the configuration of the state and everything is really uh, trivial. Let's see the business logic here. So this app, if we can call it in that way, has just one class, state, that is managing uh, the app state, okay? And what we have here, just uh, an array with numbers, okay? One, two, three, right? This is like the initial state. And what can we do here? Well, we can just add a number, okay? If we add it, we just add a number, no problem. We can add a, a collection of numbers, okay? We can remove a, a, the last number from the array, yeah, with pop last, and we can count uh, the number of elements in the array, right? This is, is trivial. If we go back to uh, the test, we can see that they are already passing, but let me show you right now that is true. Okay, the tests are passing, okay? And what we are doing here? Well, uh, first off, this test one is adding two numbers, okay? Four and five. We are expecting to count five elements. Yeah, okay, because remember, the beginning, we had just one, two, three, and then we have now one, two, three, four, five, right? And we are also removing the last element here. And then we, are, we should expect a five, okay? However, if you notice the next test, the next test is adding six and seven, okay? Uh, but if we, if we got here the count, you will see that we are, we are getting six, okay? Well, technically speaking, we, it, this is right because at the beginning we had three and then we added two, we have five, but then we remove one element, so we have four. And then we have a, another two and now we have six, okay? And then we remove the last element, which is seven, okay? And lastly, we add eight and nine, but if you make the notice, yeah, we subs you subtract uh, this uh, number here and then num and number seven, and then we are counting seven, not nine elements, okay? So if you notice, th what we do in this test is affecting the next one and so on. That's the configuration that we have in this application, okay? And maybe that's your case. With exit tests, you have a collection of tests that are depending one after another, okay? Um, I don't, I cannot say that this is ideal or so, but it's what the configuration here is, okay? It is, exit test is not running your test by default uh, in parallel, so you have to adapt your test for that, okay? Now, let's see that we want to incorporate Swift testing in our project, okay? So we want to refactor this. And so what I'm going to do right now is just uh, commenting this, okay? And here, 
and you just make the homework for you, and bring in an abstract that basically contains the same test, but now this is migrated to uh, Swift testing, okay, with this uh, test macro, okay. Uh, by the way, remember that this is a series. If you want to review uh, everything, the installation, the test macro, uh, suites, stacks, and more, you have a link in the description and a tag at the top of this video. Okay, so now, yeah, again, we have uh, uh, the same state. We have add numbers, four and five, six, seven, and eight, nine. We are counting here five, right? Uh, we are counting uh, here six and then seven. Uh, and yeah, we're basically doing the same. What is the other difference is that now we are using expect, okay? Now let's see what happened if we run this. Because again, Swift testing is running everything in parallel by default, okay? So let's see, let's see what it's the, uh, behavior now. Let's run the test. As you can see now, we got a bunch of errors. First off, for some reason, uh, we are getting seven instead of five. Um, yeah, so everything is, is not working as supposed to be, okay? And you can see now that here we are expecting nine so probably this test was run at the end. And yeah, so there are a bunch of things here that we can just figure out. And you, you, you already saw that the state is pretty trivial, okay? And we already got, and again, this is because previously we depend from first running test one and then test two and finally test three, all right? So of course this is not, not, not ideal. So. Um, let's say, yeah, you want to use uh, Swift testing, um, but you want to migrate gradually, right? You don't have time maybe to fix that because there are hundreds of tests running one after another. But then how can we do? I mean, again, should we wait for uh, fully migrating everything one shot? No, actually there is one uh, great tool for keeping your test uh, serialized, okay? So what we're going to do is just simply marking all this uh, struct test with a suite. Remember suite from the previous episode? Uh, there is a property that we can use. Some, there are some traits that we can use. One of those is called serialize. Sorry. Yep. So basically it's yeah, a, a trait that will uh, make your test uh, serialize, okay? And we will have the same behavior as before in exit test, right? So let's run this now and see what happens. Yeah, it's passing. It's magic, right? And now test one, is running first and then test two and then test three. Awesome. However, this is <laughs> this is not the ultimate goal of using Swift testing, right? We want to improve our tests to make them make them parallel because otherwise, the I mean, if this test is taking one minute and then this one takes another minute and then the last one takes uh, three minutes, we are wasting just five minutes in total instead of, let's say, three minutes, because this one is running at the same time of this one and this one, okay? So the longest test technically will dictate what is the total amount of time. And again, that will depend on the number of cores and other factors, okay? But you get the idea. Uh, this is a tool that you can use to uh, jump to uh, uh, Swift testing and get a better uh, syntax, uh, a more uh, ergonomic one. Um, but again, it's just a, like a temporary fix for you if you want to migrate directly, okay? Or if, let's say, for some reason, you had to run this uh, set of tests uh, serialized, 
but maybe everything else will be parallel, that's fine too. I mean, it's up to you how you want to configure this. But for me, my goal was to show you this uh, configuration in case you need it. That will be it for this episode. Remember that you can leave your like and subscribe. That's the way you can support this channel. And remember that you will have more Swift testing in coming episodes. That's it for me. Thank you so much and have a great day.